the video you're about to see is about my palm date jelly that I'm making. And it's a lengthy one, so I'm dividing it into two videos. This is part one. Be sure to stay tuned for part two. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription button. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And don't forget to ring the notification bell. Hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to my channel. I made a video yesterday doing a little bit of an update on my fruit trees and how my recovery is coming along. And I told you that my palm tree was putting on, uh, or the dates were dropping out of the palm tree. They're ripening. And I'm going to make some jelly. So I hope I have the strength to do this. I feel pretty weak. I've been stirring around quite a bit trying to get everything set up and it kind of washes me out but you all just bear with me and let's see if we can't do this I want to show you uh, my my palm dates that I have here I have not washed these I'm getting ready to wash them but I, I weighed them and I've got right at 12 pounds of dates and so what I'm going to do is wash these and then I'm going to put them in a pot covering them with water and cook them until they start breaking open and cooking down and then I will mash them and get all the juice out so let's start getting them washed you want to make sure that you get all the husk off of your dates and all the trash because with them falling um, of course they they get trash on them but the husk is where it's connected to the pod which this is what I have in my hand. I was looking to see, but you want to clean them really good. I'm going to wash them a couple of, do a couple of washings on them. You can see how dirty the water is. Yesterday while I was gathering them, I tried to get the most of the husk off of them. This makes the most wonderful jelly. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of has a little bit of a twang to it uh, if you've ever eaten plum jelly, but it's not quite, quite as sharp. It's really hard to describe because it has a very different flavor, but everyone that has tried this absolutely loves it. I'm going to take these up now and run some clean water. I have so many dates out there. There's no way that I can use them all. I really hate to see them go to waste, but it's insane to make it all in jelly and not use it too. I used to eat these as a child. There was a, there was a hotel at one time in the little town that I was raised in, and they had these palm dates the palm trees growing out in front of that hotel and these dates would fall off and you know as kids we'd pick them up and eat them so I knew that they wouldn't hurt you and I thought you know I just wonder how this would turn out if I made jelly out of these so several years ago I tried it and it was a hit so I've been making them every year since then. I've been making this jelly. Okay, I'll get some clean water drawn up and do another washing. And then we'll start getting these on the stove cooking. So I'll be right back. You can hear my little dogs, they're having a ball playing, making such a racket, chasing one another and tussling around, so please excuse the noise. You 
you would think they were fighting, but they're not. Okay, those are clean. I have all the trash out of them. And you can see the really ripe ones here are bursting open. And this is what they'll do when I cook them. And then I will just have to squeeze them. They have a rather large seed inside. So you don't get a lot of pulp. But anyway, I'm going to get a big pot now and put those in it. Just pour these in. If I can do it without spilling them everywhere. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is cover these with water. And then I'll be back. Okay, you can see that I just have them covered with probably uh, half an inch of water above the fruit. And so now I'm going to put them on my stove and turn them on and let them go to cooking. And as soon as they get cooked down, I will be back. But until then, I am going to go and take a rest because I feel really tired. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, my dates have been cooking probably for about an hour and hour and a half. And so um, I'm going to turn the heat off and kind of mash them down best I can. You can see that the water is um, getting more opaque as I mash this because it's pressing the juice out of these dates. I'm going to turn the heat back on low and let this simmer uh, since I have pressed these dates and releasing the juice out of them. So I'm going to put a lid on this and turn it back on low and let this just simmer for a while. And then what I will do is turn it off and let it sit overnight to cool. And then tomorrow I'll finish the process. So I'll see you later on. I'm going to let my dates sit in the juice. In fact, I have, uh, as you saw in the video, I have mashed as much as I can uh, for the time being. I have I've pressed them with a potato masher to try to get the pulp out so that the juice will be stronger. And so now what I'm going to do is I have covered it with a lid. I am putting it back on a low heat and I'm going to let it simmer for probably about an hour. And then I will turn it off let it cool, and then I will refrigerate it. I have another doctor's appointment in the morning. I go back to Jacksonville to see the oncologist and then to see a PA to have more fluid pulled off my chest and see about having a saline fill. I don't know if they'll do that tomorrow or not. But anyway, all is good, and uh, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow with this. So I'll continue my video at that point. See you then. Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is the following day from my video where I have gathered the dates. This is Tuesday and I have just gotten back from Jacksonville. Um, and I'm going to work on my date, palm date jelly. So I have let it cool and now what I'm going to do is I'm, my hands are washed. I have washed them and I'm going to just get in to my uh, juice and dates and I'm going to squeeze them really good with my hands. And so I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm just going to reach in so that they're... I, I mashed them with a potato masher yesterday, but you just can't get them all squeezed like that. So I want to really give them a good squeeze and get all that juice out of the pulp. While I was at the doctor's office today, the PA um, told me, I was telling her that I had made, was in the process of doing this. And she said that her mother makes palm date jelly. I never knew of anyone that had done it, so there are people that do this. I had just never heard of it. 
Okay, I know I probably don't have all of them squeezed, but I have the most of them. And so what I'm going to do now is to pour this through a strainer. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands again, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to slowly pour this in. Okay, and I'm going to let that drain through. You take a spoon and kind of move this around. This is going to make a lot of juice. I probably will freeze part of this and just make a portion of it into jelly and then when we eat that I can take the juice out of the freezer and make some more jelly because I don't think I'm going to need that much. Okay. I have my jars are washed and prepared, ready, but I think I'm probably going to have to have more jars than that. I will take this um, pulp and seeds and I will take them to my son's pigs. I think they would probably enjoy this. So that would be a little treat for them. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this was 12 pounds of dates. Um, and as you can see, it's going to yield out quite a bit of juice. Okay. I have this large jar, and I think I purchased this at Walmart. And this is what I'm going to use to strain my fruit juice through. I have an old pillowcase, and please disregard how this looks, because I don't sleep on this. I strictly use this to strain my juices when I'm making jellies. So I use the same one because the, the juice will stain the clothes. And rather than using cheesecloth, I use this pillowcase. It's thin and it works really great. So what I'm going to do is just put it over the mouth of this jar. Okay, I want it to be so that the juice won't overflow as I pour it in. But I'm going to take some zip ties and wrap around the mouth of this jar to hold my pillowcase in place. Okay. All right, that should hold. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is to start straining my juice through this. You don't have to do this, but if you strain it, your jelly would be more clear than if you don't strain it. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, it has sediment in it. So if you just kind of stir it, you can see where it's settling on the pillowcase. That's the sediment that I'm talking about. And um, it'll flow through faster if you kind of just keep it stirred to keep the bottom clear so it can go on through. This can take a little while for it to strain through. This is probably the most time consuming part of the process. 
because it will be kind of slow to drain. Okay, it has just about drained all the way through. You can see the sediment, how thick this is. I'm going to put it in this pot to see how thick. That's what you don't want in your juice. It won't hurt anything to be in the juice, but your, your jelly just would not be as clear. I think that this has just about drained as much juice out as it's gonna, gonna get. So what I'm gonna do now is scoop this up and discard it. I'm gonna put it with the pulp and give it to the pigs. All right, I'm gonna snip my ties and I'm going to remove the pillowcase. And you can see now why I continue to use the same one. Because it makes a mess. There's my juice. And even though it's not crystal clear, I'm not going to strain it again. I just do mine one time. Uh, if you were to choose to want to strain it again, you know, that's certainly up to you. But... I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. I will take it out tomorrow, and I will complete the jelly. So, I'll be back. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you in part two. Bye.